Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. We got a story time video today, and it's about how the antics of an edgy ranger almost ruined a campaign. So anyways, sit back and enjoy as I do something akin to a live reading of this absolute insanity. Enjoy. Hi, this is an old horror tale my group tells still. We've been playing for four years now and soon be hitting five years together. Anyhow, the folks in the story were me, the DM, the bard, the new player, the rogue, my friend, the ranger, edgy player one, and the wizard, the min-maxing player. The min-maxer wasn't a problem player, they just enjoyed playing optimally, but still let others shine. Anyhow, red flags were blaring before the game started. I chose to ignore it thinking that maybe the ranger was just having pre-game excitement since they were new. For example, the ranger player accidentally gave themselves extra levels despite starting at level 1, and they were planning on multi-classing into every class, so put level 1 into every class. We had a private conversation about it, and I said, Hey, since you're a new player, I really don't recommend multi-classing. Ranger. Oh, don't worry. I've been playing for years. Me. I thought you said you were new. Ranger. Oh, new to this module. I thought you meant if I had ever played LMOP. Yes, yeah, so that right there. That, that's, uh, I think maybe two different levels of concern. Don't get me wrong, I am very much so a min-maxer as we've probably seen within the channel already, but if you're going to be aiming to have like a long-term game of D&D, and you're like, hey, I'm going to make a build that like does super suboptimally, sometimes it can take even the roleplay aspect back if you're just a character that really underperforms. Don't want to get too deep into this, but usually with multi-classing, you want to be better than the sum of your parts. And if, you know, there's a little bit of narrative flair that maybe makes you not as powerful, or even just right around the same amount of power that you would have if you just kept going normal, that's okay. But, you know, there are a lot of different kinds of builds where it's like, oh, you know, one in every class, or, you know, this or that, that really just isn't recommended. Anyways, getting back into the story. We talked about it and honestly was confused since I can see our message history. However, I thought no one would just blatantly lie like that, so left it alone. Then asked him to roll and roll 20 for stats. I always check character sheets and I noticed they had all 18s, but no rolls were made on roll 20. So I asked them to re-roll on roll 20. They did so this time, but did 4d20 drop the lowest. However, I corrected him and said, no, we are doing 4d6 drop the lowest. They wrote in the wrong stats afterwards so that everything was at least above 13 and three scores were 18s. While checking their sheets again, they had also wrote immune to all statuses. Oh god. I rewrote their stats and erased their immunities and told them that I said from now on I will review their sheet. They were not happy and said DM needs to trust their players and I showed them pics of his old sheet on roll 20. He stopped changing his sheet after that. And let me tell you, okay. I did bring up the one in every class thing earlier. At this point, definitely, if you've got a player that's like really kind of fiddling around with essentially information, whether that be like, oh, well, I said this before, or hey, I actually rolled this but really didn't, you know, basically just like dishonesty, that's definitely something that is a big problem. But anyways, looking at all this, you know, it's one thing to like bring a build that's definitely going to be suboptimal and then bringing it into a long running campaign. But then definitely it's another thing to just completely lie about a lot of different details like hey you know be honest with your dms about how much experience you have playing the game you know if you roll garbage stats deal with it i don't know what else to tell you and honestly that's something too that can provide a lot of really cool narrative focus because trust me even if your character can't be built the way you want them to they can still tell the story that you want to tell even if your stats suck and it can also be interesting because it can add more character flaws, which can make an even better and more interesting character. Anyhow, what made their character edgy is they were an Aarakocra with black and red wings. Their parents were horrible and abused their character. The ranger's character ran away and wants revenge against his parents, but he is also cursed and has a magical cursed weapon. The cursed weapon helped him kill armies, and he defeated a dragon before meeting the party. I told him, no, you did not defeat an army or a dragon, nor do you have an amazing plus three magic cursed weapon at level one. During our session, thanks to our wizard, we were able to progress swiftly. Our edgy ranger did not want to start with the party. Ranger. My ranger is stalking the party because I do not yet trust them. Me. No, during session zero, I said all of you meet up at a tavern, being old friends of Gundren 
We even did roleplay. Ranger. Well, I changed my mind now. I'm actually stalking the party. I just said fine, since the other three are having fun anyways, and him lurking in the back is no problem. If you played the mop, there is a trap in the beginning that can be dangerous. The bard rogue wizard all run from the crashing water to avoid getting hurt. I had told everyone that you hear rushing waves and you have one round to get out of the way. The ranger says, I choose to intimidate the rogue. <laughs> Me, are you sure? Ranger, yes. Me, there is a trap barreling your way. Don't you want to move? There's a safe chamber right here, or you can make a check to hold on to the stone, or you can just fly. Ranger, no. I in <laughs> No, I choose to intimidate the rogue. I don't trust them. DM, so the water comes crashing down, knocking out the ranger. Ranger, what? This is unfair. You never said it would have hurt me. How come I never got a chance to avoid the trap? Rogue, the DM warned you and you chose to <laughs> the DM warned you and you chose to intimidate me. Ranger, I wanted to redo <laughs> I'm sorry, but you had more than enough time and I also gave you options. Ranger, well I get up anyway because the party will pick me up. Oh, you poor soul, this isn't like Fortnite, they're not gonna come res you. Rogue, well technically we don't know you got washed out. You weren't with us, you were stalking in stealth mode, remember? You know, it's not every day that a rogue truly comes in and tries to mitigate the number of headaches that a DM deals with, but this one, this rogue's got a good note in my book. Anyways, DM, roll death saves. Ranger succeeds on a nat 20 and gets up out of the cave. The ranger was angry, went to the final boss at 1 HP, and said he wants to work with them and kill the party. He fails his persuasion check, but then demands a deception roll. I let him and he not wants his deception. Unbeknownst to him, the party was listening to the conversation. So when the boss decided to fight the ranger to capture him for interrogation, the party waited outside the boss room. The boss crit the ranger, killing him instantly. He screamed at the party for refusing to help him. I told him to calm down. They did overhear him telling the boss he wanted to kill the party. The party wins and begins to collect the loot. Bard says he touches the ranger's bow. Ranger. So my bow is actually cursed, and you die now. I take over your body, and I'm alive again. I mean, that does not happen. Ranger. Yes, it does. I have a cursed magic weapon that brings me back and kills whoever else touches this. Me. I never gave this to you. Ranger. I decided that I had it now. This is the most powerful ranger I've ever seen. Being able to bend the multiverse to their will. Bruh. I decided I had it now. Oh god, oh god, I decided I had it now. That's a good one. Me. Bard, you get the bow and nothing happens. Ranger leaves the call, then tells me for his next character he wants to be a child who has been- Oh. Then for his next character, he tells me he wants to be a child who has been essayed. I told him he wasn't welcome back anymore. Yeah, that's- that's a good call. I left out a lot of stuff he did in session one, like tried to shoot the rogue. He got caught stealthing by the party, but argued he was invisible. He fought the wolves on his own and started getting mad that I didn't make the party come help when the party had no clue who or even where he even was. Even just DMing the party, what they can or can't do and reminding the ranger they were not the DM. I was naive and thought problem players were probably just over-exaggerated stories. Now I've really learned from my mistakes and no longer ignore red flags. I've been DMing for my current group for four years now, and we enjoy sharing this story about how an edgy player tried to DM themselves alive again. Oh boy. All right, so let's, uh, huh. Yeah, so now that we've actually come to the end of the story, let's really, really look at everything here. Don't ever ignore red flags. Just kind of like remember where they are, remember where they came up. Because sometimes like it can just be a big misunderstanding. But, you know, if you really start to see patterns emerging, that's the kind of thing where like, hey, you know, once this can be funny twice or maybe three times okay like let's nip this in the bud before this becomes a big problem the other thing too players we can joke about this as much as we want but like at the end of the day it is the dm's say on what happens in addition while there are definitely parts of trauma and suffering that can lend themselves very well to making interesting characters and really showing just growth overall for characters as a whole there are definitely things that need to be okayed with your DM. Uh, for example, like a lot of people want to play D&D for the sole reason of just fantasy and escape. 
and you know bringing up things like SA within games and abuse and trauma are you know very difficult real world subjects and there are a lot of people that you could potentially be playing with that aren't always really comfortable with that or you know just being around these sorts of topics and then just I mean, first of all, with the audacity of, like, treating the whole session this way and then just being like, okay, and then for my next character, I'm going to be a child who's been essayed. It's like, okay, that's a lot of... There's a lot wrong with that. Like, why do you want to play a character that way? And it's just... It's a very messy situation. I don't really think that this needs a whole lot of extra explaining about why that would be the case. But anyways, though... I do hope that you enjoyed this story. I do hope that in the midst of my ramblings and reactions, you've learned a little something more about how to be potentially a better DM or a better player. And with that, I look forward to seeing all of you next time. If you really enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe for even more content from yours truly. And in the meantime, keep smiling, keep scheming, and I'll see all of you very soon.